Hey, Expedition Kids. You know what? <laughs> I think you do. You know I'm glad to be with you today. You also know, that's right, it's another great day to talk about Jesus in the Bible. So let's kick off our time together like we always do. Let's pray, okay? Bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this new day. God, we are halfway through our bug series, and you've been showing us bugs like crazy that can teach us things about you and your ways. Help us today as we learn about a new bug and a new thing about you. We love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And all God's children said, Amen. <laughs> Tried not to say it really loud. So you guys could overpower me, did you? Okay, we're going to do something just slightly different today. Well, there's just going to be a little addition. I want you to start watching really closely because somewhere on the screen around me, during my lesson, words are going to show up. And I want you to write those words down. And then at the end of the lesson, I want you to put them together and see if you can make the sentence that I've created for you. But for that, you're going to need some supplies, right? You're going to need a piece of paper and a writing thingy. Your favorite writing thingy or any writing thingy. So I want you to pause the video now, grab you some paper and something to write with. Okay, hold on to that. Watch for the words around the screen. You're going to be able to make a sentence pretty soon. And today, our bug is not an insect. Well, insects, as you all know, have six legs and like a segmented body. But today's creepy crawly is a crustacean with multiple legs. Some people call them pill bugs. Their scientific name is kind of funny. And it's, it's, let me see if I can get this right. Armadilladilladay. Or armadilladilladay. Yeah, that was it. Armadilladilladay. Can you say that with me? Let's try it. Armadilladilladay. <laughs> That's a funny word. Some people even call them doodle bugs. And I've heard them called things like slaters and even potato bugs. Yeah. Potato bug, that's what I've heard them called. But most kids call them roly polies because of one unique characteristic. Well, they can curl themselves up into a ball. Roly polies are tiny, defenseless creatures with no way to fight off predators. The only protection that they have is the shell on their backs. And they make the most of that shell by curling themselves up into a ball. So if a predator comes along, they are completely surrounded by the shell. In the roly-poly, it may be safe from being eaten, but that doesn't mean it can't be harmed. A frustrated predator or a mischievous kid could come along and bat them around, rolling them across the ground like a soccer ball. In the roly-poly, it might survive the encounter, but he is going to feel very dizzy. Sometimes fear can make us feel like a poor roly-poly. We curl up in our shells and the things we fear bat us around. They knock us back and forth while we're helpless to do anything frozen in fear. But today's Bible story is about a time the people of Judah, Judah were frozen with fear. The great King Jehoshaphat got word that not one, not two, but three armies were coming to invade them. That sounds scary to me. And the people, they were terrified. But the king and his people took their fear to God. I'm going to tell you this story, okay? It's found in 2 Chronicles 20, 1 through 30. You don't have to look it up today. Just listen as I tell you how the story goes. All right, three armies from the Moabites, the Ammonites, and the Meunites decided to start a war with Judah. 
some men came to tell King Jehoshaphat that they were coming. And they said, A large army is coming against you from Eden, from the other side of the Red Sea, and they are already in Hazaz on Tamar. That must have been pretty close because Jehoshaphat, he was afraid. So he decided, I'm going to ask the Lord what to do. And he announced that no one in Judah should eat during this special time of prayer to God. And then Jehoshaphat prayed this awesome prayer that we can really learn from. First he said, Lord, you are the God in heaven and you rule over all the kingdoms and you have power and strength and no one can stand against you. Then he began to tell God all the things that God did for the Israelite people and that he had gave them the land of Israel. And he said, trouble may come to us. It may be war or punishment, sickness or a time of hunger. But if it comes, we will stand before you and before this temple where you have chosen to be worshipped. And we will cry out to you when we are in trouble. Then you will hear us and save us. But God, there are men coming. You know, those guys that we left alone when we took over this land that you gave us, now they're coming to get us. God, punish those people. We have no power against this large army that is attacking us. We don't know what to do. So we look to you for help. That was a good prayer. All the men of Judah stood before the Lord. Their babies, their wives, their children were all with them. And then this cool thing happened. The spirit of the Lord entered into a man named Jehaziel. And he stood up and he said this. Remember, this is God speaking through him. Listen to me, King Jehoshaphat. Listen, all you people living in Judah and Jerusalem. Don't be afraid or discouraged. That is something so classic of God, isn't it? We hear him say that a lot in the Bible. Then he said, this battle is not your battle, but it is God's battle. Then he gave them instructions. He said, tomorrow, go down there and fight these people. But, but, but you won't need to really fight these people. Just go down there and stand strong in your places, and you will see the Lord save you. Judah and Jerusalem, do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. The Lord is with you. So go out against them tomorrow. Sounds like something God would say, doesn't it? Well, I tell you what. Jehoshaphat bowed face down on the ground before the Lord, and so did all the people that were there, and they worshiped the Lord. Can you picture that? Jehoshaphat with his face to the ground and then all the people, babies and kids and moms and dads, all with their faces to the ground. That is some kind of worship. Then the next day, the army went out to meet the oncoming armies. And Jehoshaphat said, listen to me, people of Judah and Jerusalem, have faith in the Lord your God. And then you will stand strong and you will succeed. Wow. So the children of Judah and had every reason to be afraid, right? They were outnumbered. Three giant armies, three to one. They knew they could not win in an open battle with Ammonites, Maobites, and Meunites. So when Jehoshaphat called on them to fast and pray, they had no choice but to follow their king. But thankfully, God heard their cries. God already knew about the army coming to fight his people, and God was ready to defeat them. God only wanted Jehoshaphat and his people to call on him first. God gave Judah victory over their enemies without Israel having to draw a single sword. Before they even reached the battlefield, their enemies were wiped out. The people of Judah marched into battle singing praises, And they marched away singing more praises to God. God took their fears and overcame them. And God can do the same with ours. 
Jehoshaphat teaches us three things about fear. First, we need to give our fear to God. We shouldn't wait and hide while fear knocks at our door. We need to take our fears right to the Lord. He already knows what we're afraid of and why. But God wants to make sure that we are ready to listen and to trust him in everything. Second, the battle belongs to the Lord. God told Jehoshaphat, this is not your fight. This is my fight. And the armies of the Maobites, Ammonites, and Meunites weren't just challenging Judah, but the God they served. God always loves and protects his people. And God was quick to step in and win the day on their behalf. God will do the same for us if we give our fears to him. God loves us. If we're following God's will for our lives, he will overcome any obstacle put in our way. God is our defender and our protector, and he is always looking out for us. Finally, Jehoshaphat teaches us that when we are afraid, we need to praise God. We need to praise him knowing that he will go into battle for us, and we need to praise him after the battle is won. God loves to hear the praise of his people, and praise is the way we can show our love for God and our gratitude for what he has done. Maybe you've come to church with fear in your heart today. Maybe there's someone or something bothering you. Now, maybe you feel like a roly-poly, helpless and knocked around. If so, it's time to give that fear to God. Pray for God to fight the battle and praise him for, the, for his goodness. God will hear you. God will give you more reason to praise him when he helps you overcome your fear. before we go. Thanks for being with us today. Bow your heads. God, we thank you so much that you teach us that we should give our fears to you. When we're afraid, we should come to you and ask for your help. Praising you, knowing that you will help us because we are your children. And then when you win the battle for us, praising you afterwards because you are amazing and wonderful. Be with us this week. Give us protection. Take care of us and bring us back here next week safely. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. That was a cool lesson. Roly polies, potato bugs, they're pretty cute and kind of amazing and very interesting, aren't they? I learned a lot today. Thanks, Roly Poly, for teaching me to take my fear to God. You guys have a great week, and remember that Jesus loves you, and so do I.
Now go, and don't roll up in fear. Trust God.